J.J. rushes back to the sound system, which he doesn't need to do. I just want to welcome y'all this morning. I hope you had a spectacular, a splendiferous, developer trip. <coughs> what a wonderful weather day we had, and I'm sure all of you had friends and family over and just enjoyed it, and I'm so grateful that you're here. I hope that you came seeking God. But I'll tell you, he's here today. And I hope you will leave today feeling refreshed, <coughs> blessed, feeling his love, and experiencing a little bit of his hope. You know, this past week was pretty busy. Last Sunday, we had a pageant event for the kids of our, of our church and the food pantry. I don't know, we had 50 or 60 people here, I think, at least for that. And that was a wonderful event, and I just appreciate all the effort that so many people put into that. That was a great event. And on Tuesday night, we had our very first Blue Christmas special, which I think, all things considered, was the was the hope. And I hope it was well received by those that were, were here. And then, of course, we, we recently had our Christmas Eve service at the uh, church. It's a tad more full than right now. I mean, just a tad. But it was it was a great, great event. We had some wonderful, wonderful music. AJ is adjusting my volume, I can tell. You know. I want to remind you that we are trying to have a special baptism service in January. If anybody in your family has not been baptized and they would like to do so, I would appreciate your telling me about that. Right now, I have not had a single response, which I'm pretty sure is not exactly accurate, but maybe people are afraid. That's, that's okay, too. But if you have that need in your family, please do let me know. And today is family day in our church. And so if you're here with family, I am just delighted that you're here. We again welcome you. I hope you will enjoy the service and make it very special to you. As we begin our worship service today, let's stand and sing together the doxology. It, it gives a complete message. 
And so I certainly don't want to leave out in any of the stanzas. So we're going to sing all four stanzas of It Is Well With My Soul. But you may want to pay attention to the message of this hymn. It's one of the greatest messages, really, in, uh, in all of uh, the world of hymns. So let's sing together, It Is Well With My Soul.
omnipotent Father of mercy and grace, thou art welcome in this place. Children of God, welcome. Welcome to this place of love and grace. Welcome to this place of hope and perseverance. God invites all of us to be a part of the beloved community. God invites all of us to share in the good news. We are welcome just as we are. We are loved just as we are. In gratitude for all of this, let us worship God. Let us pray. Father God, who walks with each one of us, help us to place our trust in your guiding care for us as we gather to learn the great lessons of living in peaceful community with each other. Prepare us to be witnesses of your love and forgiveness. Make us ready to work for you in your creation. For we ask this in the name of Jesus, your beloved Son. Amen. It is the custom of this church to remind ourselves of what we believe every Sunday. And I invite you to do this with us. Today, we're going to use number 881. That's the back of your hymnal. It's called the Apostles' Creed, the traditional version. I would love to have you recite it with me if you want to. I believe in God, the Father Almighty. Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and dead and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sat at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From then he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of our body, and the life everlasting. Amen. At this time, we want to invite our young folks to go for their uh, Sunday school lesson. And while they're doing that, we're going to sing Jesus Loves Me. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. Thank you. And and now uh, a song to bless us from uh, our friend Wilburn Hart. Uh, we were just very blessed to have him with us on uh, Christmas Eve to. Uh, get us lighted up a little bit. Uh, he'll be doing the same, I, I do believe, uh, today. But we're very thankful to have Wilbur with us uh, all the time. Wilbur, can you come? Let's church say amen. 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 It's a pleasure and a privilege for me to come whenever I can be here. And I love Sing these hymns because not a whole lot of churches today is actually singing hymns. So I'm grateful each time I get a chance to do that. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain. That Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept their watching over silent flocks by night. 
day. Behold, throughout the heaven, there's your holy light. Hey, go tell it on the mountain, over the hill and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. The shepherds fear and tremble, low above the earth. Ring out the angel chorus that hail the Savior's Thank 
believer that God will speak to someone today, will it be you? So I'm going to share with you two pieces of scripture today. The first from Romans chapter 8, which goes like this. And Christ lives within you. So even though your body will die because of sin, the Spirit gives you life because you have been made right with God. The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal body by the same Spirit living within you. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. For if you live by its dictates, you will die. But if through the power of the Spirit you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. And secondly, Galatians 2 Verse 20. My old self has been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who moved me and gave himself for me. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks to God. Well, I know this is a shock, y'all, but Christmas is over. <laughs> and it's now time to begin the process of undecorating our homes, <coughs> our yards, and yes, even our lives. After getting everything all pretty, it will soon be time to return to normal living, life before the holiday, life without decorations and glitter and glitz. As we head toward the end of the year, it is a time to look more deeply at who we are and where we are headed. Without decorations to hide the reality of our souls and our hearts. Pretty sweaters are going to be gone. The red shirts will be put in the closet. The seasonal dresses will be hung up, ready to reappear one year from now. And some of you breathe a sigh of relief because you're ready for the hustle and bustle to slow down so you can catch your breath and experience a little bit of solitude and even a little bit of peace after the visitation of your family. It's also time to remove our holiday masks. And no, I'm not talking about the COVID thing today. Mm -hmm. The holiday mask of smiles, happiness, and return to our normal selves. The word normal, to me lately, seems <clears throat> strange word. It certainly lost its interpretation for many of us, if not most of us. So we need to return to just being ourselves. For some of you, that may not be all that happy. If some of you are going to go home and you're going to get undressed, you're going to look in the mirror, you're going to look at your body and you say, Whoa, is that me? Of course, that is not being going to tell. A downer for some, but perhaps a time for many others to re-examine as we are at the end of the year, to re-examine the scripture. To re-examine the scripture that says, be still and know that I am God. Because once the hustle and bustle is gone, it's time to, to pause and look at ourselves. And as the scriptures, I think, pretty clearly stated just a moment ago, in both scriptures, we find this important phrase, 
Christ now lives in us. That's pretty important. Pretty important. As we head toward the exit gates of a new year, perhaps it is time to re-examine our lives, our faith, our health, our roles in our family, our roles here at church, and ask important questions as we head into the new year. Getting rid of what I think many of us would agree has been a crazy year. Can I get an amen? <laughs> there is always a question to ask, and that question is, what are the new paths that our journeys will take? John Wesley's approach to life, to ministry, and to building churches can best be described with a simple phrase, full service. He sought to be an example of what he thought people should be and what churches should be. And he thought about serving the community to help those in poverty, help those in prison, to help provide better education for men, for women, for kids, and to oppose things like animal cruelty to support women's rights way back when, before that term ever became popular in our culture. And he also was a very much dedicated to reaching out and helping addicts in society, whether it's alcohol or drugs or other things. That is what the concept of full service ministry meant John Wesley. That is what he wanted his churches to be all about. And I think we've made gigantic progress in heading in that direction over the last two years. And we have more work to do. And I am eager. Y'all know how serious I am, but I am eager to hear what ideas you guys have for new ministry. If you ever want to talk about a new ministry, you call me up. I love to talk about new ministry. Because new ministries afford us an opportunity to not only re-examine who we are and where we are, but to look forward, to look back, to see the opportunities that are there that we haven't taken advantage of. And so I need to ask you the question, are you ready? Are you ready for the new year? Are you ready for some new challenges? Are you ready for some new ideas? Are you ready to mark the landscape of this church with your contribution? Because there is plenty of space in the painting that's being painted right now. I want to tell you a story. I like stories are are wonderful things. We can look at other people and examine their lives. So I want to tell you a story about a guy named Sam Bringle. Anybody heard of Sam Bringle? Okay. Well, he's a pretty famous guy, actually. Sam was a Methodist minister, but he had a calling to serve the Lord that was just mightily powerful. He felt the call to go out and preach in high school, and so he actually started preaching on a circuit with a couple of small churches before he even went to seminary. He grew up in a church about like this, a small rural church. Sam Bringle caught an itch, a desire to know Christ more deeply and to serve him more fully than perhaps the average person. His call to ministry was described in a book that I highly recommend to you. It's called They Found the Secret. And the author of that book included a chapter on at least a dozen people, but one of the chapters is on Sam Bringle. Sam, Sam just, he just could not accept being a mediocre Christian. He wanted a life that was fully dedicated to serving the Lord. And his life truly matches that Romans a scripture, which includes the concept of growing in his likeness to Jesus. Sam wanted to be more than just a 
another preacher? Why is an athlete aspiring to go to the Olympics? He wanted to be the very best he could be. He fought against the notion of being a mediocre preacher. And that is something that I can relate to. He wanted to be a great preacher. One who preached the gospel and brought people to Christ. He was influenced in all kinds of ways. He was mostly influenced by one piece of scripture. 1 John 1 9, which says, But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. And one day the Holy Spirit grabbed Sam Bringle and shook him up. And Sam's words. His heart was melted like wax before fire, and he was filled with the unutterable love that God had taken residence in his heart. And he therefore was now a temple, <coughs> a temple of the living God. Both of those scriptures spoke of those exact words. And the reality of those words the experience that Sam Bringles had. And it's also the experience that Christ invites you to experience this morning. Sam looked at his own life and he compared his pride to the humility of Jesus. And he compared his emotions to the love that Jesus experienced. And at the end of that comparison, he concluded, as should most of us, that there's work to be done. Sam Bringle continued to preach, but his preaching changed. He no longer preached to please people or to receive their appreciation. He preached to disturb and convict the people in his audience that they needed to repent, which sounds a whole lot like what both John the Baptist and Jesus preached. And it was at this point in his ministry that Sam Bringle made a momentous decision to leave the Methodist church where he had been serving as a pastor for many years and to go from the United States to England and begin to work for the Salvation Army. So off he went and in fact he was interviewed by none other than William Booth, who was the founder of the Salvation Army. And somewhat surprisingly, perhaps, Mr. Booth looked at Sam Franklin and said, Brother, you're not going to make it here. Hello? Because Bill Booth <coughs> knew of the dedication and the sacrifice the service of the Salvation Army required. But hearing those words did not deter Sam Brinkley. Sam responded, and he said, I offer myself to you. Please give me a chance. That's what I call an all-in response for somebody who really wants to be of service. And so he did join the Salvation Army and went on to become its leader and perhaps has the most, the most primary agent in building the Salvation Army. 
He started, however, at the bottom. He started by polishing boots. Jesus began by washing feet. Sam Brangle began by polishing boots. But he rose, rose quickly, and returned to Connecticut and also the Northeast area where he served people for years and years. Remembering in that process another piece of scripture that he enjoyed from 2 Corinthians 5 17, which says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. I hope you'll ponder that piece of scripture because that is truly, truly powerful. It goes on to say the old has passed away and the new has come. Being new with Christ inside. <clears throat> and so as we enter the gates of 2022, what transformative experience are you seeking this morning? Don't you have an itch to do something different? The story is told about Sam Brigham when he was doing a revival, of which he did many. And at this revival, there was a local pastor who came from a fairly large church. And this local pastor came because contrary to the song we just sang, this pastor knew all was not well with his soul. So he came searching. And after the first service that he came to, he approached Sam Brigham. And Pastor Sam, Evangelist Sam, gave him a response that most of you, including myself, would not find particularly helpful. And it was these words. Sanctification will fix you up. We're done. Sanctification, which means to make holy, but which also needs to be seen as a process for turning our lives over to God and living the lives that God wants us to live. And that local pastor pondered over that very sincere advice. And he came back the next night. And Sam Brigham offered an altar call at the end of this service as well. And the first part of that altar call was to ask the question, how many of you here today want to recommit your lives to the Lord? Pastor's arm shot up. And then he looked around and found out he was the only one who raised his hand. All right. Sam Brigham continued on in his message delivery. And shortly thereafter, Sam Brigham said, All right, if any of you guys want to commit your lives to Jesus Christ tonight, I want you to come forward and pray with me. gentleman who had all the attributes of a full-blown alcoholic started walking toward the altar rail. And then a woman who was dressed like you would expect someone to dress who made her money on the street started walking toward the altar. And then this local pastor started walking toward the altar. And that local pastor <laughs> said later on in life that that event was the singularly most important event in his ministry. As Pastor Brigham got older, his eyesight 
began to fail there are people in this church who understand that well no longer able to preach and serve in a church he began to do Bible studies in his home and talk about fellowship with the saints and having a relationship with Jesus Christ and it was during that period of his life that he learned to love a song that you're going to sing in just a few minutes called Blessed Assurance. A song to remember that Jesus was still his despite not having eyesight. He also enjoyed the fact that the author of that song was a lady by the name of Fanny Cross, who grew up in Bridgeport, Tennessee, and undoubtedly could have known Sam Brinkle because they weren't that far apart in the distance was. Fanny Crosby, blind since childhood, not birth, but childhood. She is reported to have written, depending upon which author you look at, by a thousand songs. That is incredible. All during a time when she was blind. And so it's no small wonder that Sam Bringle, now having failing eyesight, which went into blindness, understood the importance of the words that she penned, which includes something that you're going to sing in just a second. Words like, this is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. So if you're not sure this morning what your relationship is with Jesus, if you're not sure where you are on your Christian wall, and after the last couple of years dealing with COVID, some of you may just feel like you're completely lost. I hope you will just step up to the altar during our song or after the service and pray with me. Maybe it's time for you to get right with God, to get clean, to repent of your situation, and to start something new. Sanctification. Become holy. Work toward God. Work to be more like God. So we're going to sing a song. I hope you will thoroughly enjoy it. And then I'll be back to the benediction.
Sunday. 